Welcome everyone to another episode of the Definitive Crusade. I am your host as always, joining the machine Hughes, and joining me this week is my compadre from across the pond, Freya. How's it going? It is peachy keen. Peachy keen. <laughs> there you go. So mm. the observant of you will see that it's just Freya and I. That's right, everyone. We are the Just Us League. <laughs> And this is when no, people no. switch off. <laughs> <laughs> and we lost like 50%. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Yes. Yes, I went there. Yes, I said it. Well, you know, obviously it's on no. it's on topic, right? It's on point for this week, I suppose. Um, right. So before we get into um a little bit of a discussion around the Snyder Cut, which to be fair, you'd expect us to do, right? We're not just gonna leave that alone. Uh, we've got three books to choose from. First book up. <sighs> You know, when uh, when we dived out the books, we decided that as a punishment for some mild infraction, that we would go with this book for um, one of our colleagues. But unfortunately, um, it's blown back in our face because obviously he's not here. That's terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to talk a little bit about Joker number one. So let me just bring this up for you so we can all have a look at it. He says, looking for it frantically. There we are. Joker number one, also featuring Punchline. Well, I say featuring Punchline. It's mm, it's a, a give and take on that one, I'm afraid. So um, we'll start us off with some some stats. So we'll talk about the first part first. So it's written by James Sinian the Fourth, art by Gwilla March, colours by Arif Prianto, and letters by Tom Napolitano. Excellent. Okay. Because if we picked this with Josh as a punishment, how we got stiff with it is beyond me. But oh, we're just lucky, I guess. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So this book's out in the shops now, so we can go. You don't have to do spoiler freeze. It's out there. You can go and pick it up anytime you like. So Freya, take it away. What did you think of uh, the Joker book? Honestly, <sighs> it shouldn't have even been called Joker. Um, it, it, okay. This is more of a Commissioner Gordon story. Uh -huh. I was expecting, like, like you know how Punchline was just Punchline, mm -hmm. and Catwoman was Cat is Catwoman. Mm -hmm. This one, I mean, it's Gordon. He's talking about how you know Joker, and you know, like he talks about a lot of the villains, but he talks about how Joker has like screwed up his family, which is true throughout the comics. Mm -hmm. He attacked Barbara, and like in, I think in some of them he killed Commissioner Gordon's wife and baby, and just. All sorts of things. Well, so so you're absolutely right. So obviously the Barbara Gordon thing everyone knows about. He also mm -hmm. killed Sarah Essen, which was uh, Commissioner Gordon's second wife. And that happened as part of, I want to say it's part of, uh, I'd have to take a guess, but it's when the earthquake happened. What was that storyline mm -hmm. called? No Man's Land. It's part of No Man's Land. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, we all know what happened to James Gordon Jr., so, yeah cool so, it, yeah so i mean like i said it shouldn't i don't think it should be called joker because it's a commissioner gordon story this so happens to have joker and i'm <laughs> so done with joker at this point i just uh, they have made joker just overrated he is now the most overrated batman villain he used to be the coolest one now he's just the most overrated because he's just so boring now. I just roll my eyes every time I see a Joker story. I'm like, oh goody, another Joker story. Oh goody, Joker's showing up again. Yay! Like, it's just annoying. And, and so, like, the only interesting the part that I found the most interesting was actually the part where Gordon's talking about like he's in Chicago, uh -huh. and the um the older cop is talking about when he uh. Ran into like when he saw the true face of evil on like page five. Yeah, yeah. He he walked in on a guy eating a seventeen-year-old girl's face. <laughs> you know, like, you animal, he's like, hey, you want some? And he's like, that's yeah. a, you know. And, and I'm like, yeah, because cops see some like the creepiest and grossest crap, man. And like, yeah, I was like, I kind of agree with that point. Like, because I've said it on the podcast. Like, when does this person like stop being a because some people are not people anymore. They're monsters. Like, no human being can do 
that to another person or you know mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's a good shout yeah it's good it's good yeah it's good thought yeah it's good thought. I, thought, I thought that was the most interesting part of the book and then like mm -hmm. he kind of just gordon monologuing through 90 percent of the book and mm -hmm. then at the very end he gets picked up and she wants this what's her name cassia i, I won't call cassia her cassia. yeah um she's she, where does she say her name on page Cressida? You got that bit spot on, yeah. Cool. Well done. Um, right there, uh, yeah. Cressida. Cressida is there. Bang on mm -hmm. there, yeah. Cool. Well done. And so, yeah, and then that's that's the end of the book. The rest of it's Jim monologuing. <laughs> so, like... <laughs> as, you, as you do, of course. As you do. Yeah. As you do. Okay. Did you feel that this book had a bit of a year one vibe? Mm, a, little, mm, yeah, a little bit. But, like... I don't know. <laughs> I was. I'll just say, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Okay. Cool. So, um, I didn't mind this book, to be honest. Uh, well, mm -hmm. I tell. I'm gonna say. It, I'll start again. I didn't mind the first half of this book. Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, I like to see um, Gordon have a little bit of the ramifications of what happened to him, because obviously the thing with the Batman who laughs kind of fell by the wayside for us because we. We just weren't invested in the whole mm. Batman Who Laughs storyline. So, um, whilst City of Bane was going on, there's no there's no Gordon in police headquarters. Then, of course, the Joker War. There's still no Gordon kicking around. Um, you know, this kind of addresses the balance a little bit. It's James Tinian, so you know that he's going to be planning for the for the big the big reveal element mm. and the big story points. Um, the year one vibe, it's there in some of the art. When you were talking about the Chicago stuff, it, it came across from there. The way the fonts, the letters by Napolitano has that year one, like diary scribe feel. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I quite enjoyed it. I thought it was an interesting take. I think you're absolutely right, though. I think the Joker has become Batman's Daleks. Yeah. Yeah, or Star Trek's Borgs. You know, they just they just ha has no threat anymore. You know, he's he's overused to the max. There is nothing left that the Joker can do that's going to shock the readers anymore. You know, um, and that was part of the charm of the Joker was the fact that you didn't expect it, everything to be sort of like um, so deranged. You know, I mean, what he did to Jason, Barbara, James Gordon Jr., Sarah Essen. You know, all the all the things he's done since then. You know, I mean, what's he really done? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's kind of like you know, in a, a horror movie, mm -hmm. uh, it's like the villain. And I'm not talking slasher movies. I'm talking like an actual horror movie, like mm -hmm. where the it's scary until you see the monster, and then the more you see the monster, the less scary it is. And it's yeah. the same thing with Joker. The like he was creepy because he would pop up and do something completely crazy, you know, completely yeah. out there. But now that he's just popping up so often, it's just not, it, he's not horrifying anymore. There's nothing about him anymore. You're like, Oh, it's just another day in Gotham. Joker's doing something again, you know? <laughs> and it's, it's a shame because Batman has like the best arsenal of villains and they just, Oh, we got to use Joker for everything. <laughs> It is true. It is true. It can't seem to see past their own uh, their own nose when it comes to Joker. Bless mm -hmm. them. They very much are um, focused on that. Um, the second part of this book was something that I'm sure everybody was quite looking forward to. You know, Punchline was a bit of a revelation. I think during Joker War, everyone kind of got into her and stuff. Um, so this is Punchline Chapter One, written by Sam Johns uh, with James Tinian the Fourth, art by. Mirko and Dolfo, colours by Romolo Fajardo Jr. and letters by Adriana Meyer. Is it me or is my my name pronunciation getting actually pretty damn good now? I, I think I'm, pretty, I'm doing all right there, aren't I? Yeah. Wait till later. I'm sure I'll screw something up. <laughs> um, I don't know about you, but uh, I w I was so looking forward to this, and then by the same token, as soon as we get it, I am so done with it. It's yeah. it's focused on two characters that I could 
actually care less about. I mean, um, Harper and her brother, really? Mm-hmm. You know? There's nothing in here that screams particularly a punchline. It just, she comes across more like a, a secondary at Harley Quinn for me. And I thought that was the idea she was supposed to be different from Harley. I don't yeah. know. They're, they're kind of smashing her into the Harley mold for some reason. Yeah. It's kind of annoying. The only thing I'm getting from the punchline that I'm like, <sighs> I, I kind of like how they're kind of tying in um, the Batman Beyond universe with like the clown gangs and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting so, them. like it's kind of cool because it's like the origin of the clown gangs of like how they're teenage kids and crap. But yeah, she's kind of I don't know. I, I'm gonna give it more time, but I agree with you. She's kind of turning more into Harley, and it's bugging me. <laughs> so you're not into the clown, but you like his gang. Is that what we're saying? <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, and, and, um, I, gang- I kind of I, I also agree with you about like uh. Bluebird? Is her name Bluebird? Okay. Because I, 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 like I said, when they introduced her in the punchline book, I didn't even know who it was. I'm like, who is this? And you (laughs) just had to tell me who it was. I'm like, I, oh, okay. And um, I still have problems with her code name because I freaking watched Bat Thumb many years ago. And so I have Blue Jay stuck in my head. (laughs) I'm like, it's not Blue Jay, it's Bluebird. But like, yeah, I don't give a crap about her brother. Her brother, her whole plot point just, I don't care. I don't care about these characters. But I always say that they need to create new characters and give them time. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, I can't be too mean because, you know, I keep saying, oh, got to make these new characters and stuff. I'm like, okay, I'll give you guys more time with these characters before I really, like, start shredding them to pieces. But at this point, I don't really care. I especially don't care about her brother because I'm like, it's it's kind of like a superhero and then their sibling and i'm like why do i care about their sibling like if like like if a freaking uh, dick grayson had a a younger sister or something and she doesn't she's not a superhero or anything i'm like Mm -hmm. why do i care (laughs) and that's why most superheroes if not all are single like just uh one child you know they have no (laughs) sibling You yeah. know, because no one cares about their siblings because their siblings are boring in comparison. Yeah. To compa- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Ooh, talk about uh, sibling envy. All right. Okay. <laughs> so let I, I'm going to give you a little bit of context for this. How, just off the top of your head, mm-hmm. how long's Harper Raw been around? Just off the top of your head. I don't know. <laughs> it will be 10 years. This really? September. This September, her first appearance was Batman Volume Two, Number One. This is the um, the re, uh, re no before the Rebirth one. This is the new New Fifty Two Batman Number One. She's been around since that long, ten years. Oh, geez, well then she just falls into that category of like they create a character and then abandon them immediately, yeah. and they I should think- have they should have stuck it out because now I just want to completely shred this character <laughs> <laughs> you don't like him i think the, i think the issue for harper and her brother is the fact that the scott um scott snyder creations and scott snyder mm-hmm. creations generally stick with scott snyder so when he left when he left uh the bat books then they have no impact also i think um a little bit um they didn't know what to do with her at one point it seemed like she was going to have some sort of entanglement with with Cass, the Batgirl, mm-hmm. uh, orphan, Batgirl. Um, and then it looked like at times she was going to have a, a relationship with Steph, the spoiler, the, the spoiler Batgirl. It seems now that Spoiler and Cass are kind of doing their own thing and, and Harper's left on the sidelines uh, because she hasn't been used throughout that whole uh, recent arcs. So is this a way to kind of get her back in the forefront? I don't know. Does the book read like a social commentary? Oh, the punchline book reads like a social commentary. Yeah, it does a little bit. And you know what? I just want to be entertained. I don't yeah. particularly I don't need to hear kids arguing about, well, I believe this person, you believe that person. It's like, well, yeah. Um I'm disappointed in the art. Um I love I, I love Merca Randolfo's work on some of her um indie stuff. Um this is just a little bit too 
And I guess because it's, you know, DC, you've got to stick with the whole, you know, got to stick with the icons. You cannot change them too much. Um, so I, I would have preferred to see more of the um, essence of Andolfo's work, which is a shame because I thought Will and March absolutely killed it on the Joker story. But hey ho. <laughs> All right, there you go. So that's been out, out and about for a while. Go check it out. Um, it's the first book, or one of the first books, to have the new DC uh, main story, backup story format that um, is going to cost you a little bit of money at the uh, old comic book store, whether or not you think it's worth it. That's entirely up to you on that one, I'm afraid. Um, okay, next up, um, we've got your choice. Yeah, which, yay, which was a little bit of a surprise choice, I have to say. Um, so we are going with, although to be fair, I know you love one of these characters. <laughs> <laughs> all right, can we all say that? There we are. Excellent. We're going with Challenge of the Super Sons. Uh, this is, um, before we get too far into it, this is a digital first book. So what this basically means is you don't have to worry about continuity. Yay. <laughs> Woo! All right. So, written by Peter Tassau, uh, Tomasi. I did it, didn't I? I, I screwed yeah. myself up earlier. I did. Yeah. Peter Tomasi, <laughs> with art by Max Rayner, colors by Louis Guerra, uh, letters by Rob Lee. All right. There you go. Um, I know how much you love Damien. So, there you go. Take mm -hmm. it away. <laughs> yeah. So, I actually like the Super Sons. Um, because I like the Damien John uh, friendship. Because mm -hmm. they, they do play off each other. Like, John's <laughs> just like, uh, he's like a stereotypical kid. And then there's Damien, who has been forced to grow up way too fast. So he mm -hmm. kind of more has the mind of an adult, but he's still a kid, you know? And, and mm -hmm. it's just kind of fun to see them play off of each other. Um, and in this, um, I'm happy that you don't have to know what's going on, really. So, yeah, like, there's that element, like to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I they're they're saving cyborg and why? Like because <laughs> yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I really liked it. I like how childlike. You can totally see the difference with like um on page what page uh, eight where you know Damien's like you can. Yeah create anything you want in your mind. We're going to go save Cyborg. And so Damien creates, oh, like a mech suit and all these little drones with guns and, you know, yeah. and all these things. And then what does freaking John do? He creates himself a pony. Because <laughs> why not? So, <laughs> and the thing about this is, like, it's definitely geared towards more kids. Yeah. But it's more fun. And so I give it a pass on a lot of, like, the ridiculousness because it's for children. Um, and it's just, it's also something, it's nice to get away because there's no Joker. So that's a plus. Um, and the artwork, um, I don't hate it. Honestly, it, it kind of fits with the tone. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of has like a, like a Saturday morning cartoon type of vibe to it. Yeah. Um, which I liked. And then, I don't know. I think, I guess, from what I'm getting from this book, they have, like, a to-do list. And they're just going around doing it. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. There's, so, there's some other element to this story that, obviously, because we've not looked at any of it in the past, we have no idea what's going on. But mm -hmm. um, I think, yeah, they've got a to-do list. I think um, Faust and someone else gave them the list to, to sort it out. I think there's a reference to it later on. Where was it at? Towards mm -hmm. the end. Um, yeah, where is it? Uh, it's on page 22, Damien. Yeah. We got a next stop yeah, on our yeah, to-do yeah. list. Yeah, geez, Faust and Savage didn't, don't believe in downtime. So, so Faust and Savage have done something. So these are now going to go through the list and put right whatever one, once went wrong, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, but um, if obviously if anybody's out there is actually reading this book, get in touch with us. Let us know. That would be <laughs> handy. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah. So, like overall, I thought it was cute. It was fun. If you have any kids and you want to introduce them to comics, and they like ba Batman and Superman, I would say introduce them to this or yeah. the Super Sons in general because it's it's 
Kid Batman and Kid Superman. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when I started reading this book, I was like, what have you picked? I was like, Freya's doing it to me again. Aww. But then I actually enjoyed it. I was like, oh, what's going on here? Yeah, the, the, the dialogue's a little bit corny in places. The whole mm -hmm. Easter bunny and do you think Santa will bring me a pony? It's like, I didn't realise when I've read the Super Sons before, um, that there was such a disparity between age-wise or seemingly age-wise between Damien and John. I thought they were quite comparatively the same age. Um, I, you know, I mean, I, we know Damien's around 13, thanks to a Teen Titans book, because it was his birthday in mm -hmm. on one of the issues. Um, and we know that John was too young to join the Teen Titans. Yeah. So, but if he's like eleven, how many eleven-year-olds still believe in not only you know Santa Claus, but mm -hmm. which is real, by the way? Um, <laughs> very good, listen. Oops. Uh, and also, you know, pro wrestling. <laughs> but well, I know adults who believe in pro wrestling. So. <laughs> no comment. No comment. I am biting my tongue. Anyway, um, <laughs> where was that? So. I just thought that, that that was quite a disparity. So if even if he's like eleven, you know, so to me, if if you're still into into the Easter Bunny and stuff like that, you're probably down at like eight, something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. But the dialogue between the witty banter between the two characters is decent. It 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 is what it is. It's 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 supposed to be fun. It reads fun. It's great. The art style is a little bit stylized with the whole big head thing. But remember, mm -hmm. that's how Damien was drawn in the first place. Yeah. Fair enough, it might be accentuated over the over the, the time, um, especially when this book was coming out in its original comic book form. Um, so, you know, that's bound to carry over. Um, I found it ironic that this flying around in Superman's old toy spaceship from from the uh, late seventies, early eighties. Frey, you, you're not you're not as an old person as I am, so you won't remember it. Maybe I don't know. No, no. I didn't. No. <laughs> so this this ship. There's the, this ship with the fists that that used to be a toy. You used to be able to buy that toy, like a like a diecast dinky thing. You used to mm -hmm. you get like a bigger version that's like that, um, and you got like a little version, and then you press a button and the fists come out like that. Mm -hmm. So I think this whole merchandising thing that came out back in the back in the late seventies, early eighties, like why would Superman need a spaceship? Why does Spider Man need a car? All those sort of stuff came out, you know. And you, mean, you, know, you know, mech. Spider Man is the best. <laughs> Mechazoid Spider Man. <laughs> oh, Japanese Spider Man. Um, but yeah, I will. I can totally see them uh, releasing this toy again. Gotta get that merch nice up. Get that merch going. Yeah, mm -hmm. just what you need. A, a Superman ship flown by a Robin. Excellent. Yep. <laughs> um, so I agree with you. Actually, if this book, you know, if you've got young kids who are into comic books, or they're just in. You want to get them in the comic books. Stuff like this is a great way to do it. It's not mm -hmm. too serious. It's not too violent. You know, it's a bit like Tron meets the Super Sons. You know, um, yeah, good shout. I like it. Good call. I like that a lot. You you have surprised me with that one. Well done. Hey, sometimes I'm nice, Johnny. Sometimes. <laughs> Whilst while I try and count on my fingers and toes how many times that's actually been since I've known Freya, why don't you listen <laughs> to one of our fantastic ads for one of our other shows? Uh, we need one for your show soon, therefore. But where should we go? <laughs> we have a choice. Flip side, old timers, or the jank think tank. Which one do you think we should hit? Let's oh, do... Go, mm -hmm. go on. I would say think tank, because last time we did old timers. Think tank, here it goes.
You know, that's probably where Josh is right now, isn't he? He's probably opening mm -hmm. them packs. Like, he's probably down at Walmart. He's bought like <laughs> a shed loads of these packs of cards. He's there looking for the shinies. I know, mm -hmm. yeah, I know what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. I uh, mean, knowing where he's from, he's probably at a game store because they have them everywhere where he lives. Really? <laughs> yeah. Is this game the brand? Mm. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, we, we have game stores over here in the UK. And for the record, I hate them. Just saying. Yeah. And where, he, where he is, it's the, what they call it, the nerdiest state in the country. So, really? like, yeah, you game stores, like card games and like magic mm. shops, they're cool. ever, they're like Starbucks's. They're on like every corner there. <laughs> it's crazy. Ner Nerdville, USA. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out on the map. <laughs> <laughs> it's there. All right. Okay. So we're two down, one to go. Um, and I've got to admit, this is my choice. God knows why I picked it. I am sorry. Um, I read somewhere that was like some big reveal in it. And I was like, oh, okay, then this would be cool to uh, have a look at. Um, we are talking about the new Justice League book. Um, so it's Justice League number 59. There is the fantabulous, um, well, Kind of fantabulous cover. Um, let's get some stats up on here. So, written by Brian Michael Bendis, art by David Marquez, colours by the always fantastic Tamara Bonvillain, and letters by Josh Reed. Um, I thought this was a fun little read, although I didn't like how it tied into Bendis's other projects from back when he was in charge of everything, it seems. Um, reason being that I didn't read those books because I wasn't kind of the characters, so why do I need it again? Um, the art was quite clean, which I quite liked, um, and it was a nice change of pace from all the super dark stuff. Um, love seeing Canary again in the more traditional outfit with her mm -hmm. fishnets. Wit -woo. Um, I like the idea of Shaz Adam joining the Justice League, which is pretty much where we're going <laughs> with this. Um, he's a bit like the Doctor Doom of the DC Universe, you know, the both rule a country. And mm -hmm. they both don't see themselves as a villain. They just see themselves as doing what's best for uh, their respective um, mm -hmm. countries, one being Latvia, Latvia, and one being Kandak. I probably said that wrong because I've already screwed myself up over that so much. Um, the villain, it feels like a bit of a throwaway villain. At the first start of this book, I was like, what's going on? You know, is it, um, is it supposed to be Steppenwolf type thing? Is it Mongol? <laughs> what's, what's going on? Um, but generally speaking, I quite like the clean lines. I quite like the clean lines. Um, he's on toast in, in places, but a nice little introduction to who everybody is. And there's the canary with the fishnets. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Cool. Mm -hmm. Woohoo. All right. So, Justice League 59, what did you think? So, um, everyone kind of got beautified. Um, like everyone's so pretty in this, like face wise. <laughs> like, yeah. Adam, I'm like, geez, Adam, what happened to you? <laughs> Here's my number. <laughs> <laughs> His face, I was like, geez, what happened? Your face is very like, wow, okay, uh, yeah. I think it went let's, even. Let's go and see if I can find a good picture now of. Like um, page six, I think. Oh, there, there he is. He's Look like, guys, like, geez, dude, what happened? Because I'm used to him kind of looking older and more like gruff, I guess. And now he just looks like, I, I don't want to say a Kendall, but he's very pretty. And so is Superman. Like when you get to, um, well, Aquaman does too, but like yeah. when you get to like page, freaking, uh, what's that page where he's doing the vision and he looks at, uh, 15 because you see adam there too and like <laughs> easy there tiger <laughs> well, i mean it's like you see clark and then you see adam and like geez did we go back in time because they look like they're in their 20s like <laughs> and it's canary an looks <laughs> yeah and like you said canary's looking great and you know i i'm really happy so I'm I'm not knocking like oh this is so ridiculous it is ridiculous but I'm fine with them looking pretty, it's better than them like not having faces but <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> no. yeah. but um well as they 
don't have faces in um, page 16, 17, we're going to talk about the Flash. Canary doesn't. Yeah. Canary yeah. doesn't have a face. <laughs> Even though she's like the main focus, but yeah, it's 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 a good read. I enjoyed it. Um, I do like Adam, but I kind of I like him more as a villain than as a superhero. It, but you know, I know he's a like I guess anti-hero. But like, well, I mean, I mean, he's been on he's been on the Justice Society a few times. He's been yeah, on, know. you know. So it's like you know, I, I quite like the fact they're trying to like give it some sort of. Um, to try to bring him back into the fold a little bit. Yeah. And I feel lost because who's Naomi McDuffie? Like, what's her superhero name? Right. I have no idea, but she's the <laughs> character. I'm, I'm just, I'm, okay, because they gave everyone. They gave she's everyone a character, she's mm -hmm. a character from the Wonder Comics project that Bendis was working on when he was on top of um, um, Action Comics. Mm hmm. So um, she is one of those characters that have kind of uh, been created to kind of, I don't, I'm not going to say fill a void, um, but she's very much a case of um, filling a niche or filling a, um, um, a need. And it's part of, part of Bendis' world that he created. Um, mm -hmm. She's also in... Um, Young Justice as well. Um, her powers are, he says, looking through, quickly through everything. Um, light. It has to do with light. Uh, uh, well, it's, I just kind of find it funny because we got little like things like Black Canary, Sonic Scream Warrior, yeah. Green Arrow, you know, insanely wealthy archer extraordinaire for everyone else. I'm like, okay, we know these characters. And then she pops up and she doesn't get one. I'm like, okay, All who right. is this? <laughs> <laughs> so Naomi McDuffie is a teenage superhero from an alternate alternate earth that uses energy-based powers. Uh, she's known solely as Naomi. Uh, she was discovered. She discovers it was sent to this earth to be preserved from uh, the destructive conqueror from her birth earth. There you go. She mm. has been in um, Justice League. Her powers include transformation, energy projection, energy enhanced strike, energy blast flight, superhuman strength, and superhuman durability. Uh, mm. Her main weakness is that her powers are unstable. There you go. So one minute oh. she's going to be super great, and the next minute is, is like, uh oh. Battery no. low. <laughs> <laughs> no signal. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Um, if you've been reading Young Justice, I've probably done you a massive disservice. And if I have, to all the Naomi fans out there, I seriously apologize. But you know what? There's not enough time in the day to read all the comic books. So mm -hmm. go figure. Go figure. Um, all right. Okay. Second part of this book is, of course, the Return of the Justice League Dark, uh, written by the ongoing writer from Ram V, um, art by Zemanko, colours by Romulo Fajardo Jr., and letters by Rob Lee. Um, so this is a tale of Merlin coming back. Um, with where goes Merlin, you also get his uh, demon-infused partner in crime in Jason Blood. So... Mm -hmm. Be gone, be gone, the form of man will soon be upon us, it seems. Um, just as League Dark, hashtag John and Zatanna in love. Oh, mm. isn't that sweet? How, yeah. man. Um, I'm going to be honest, I'm disappointed. When I looked at the Future State poster, it looked like Zatanna was back, not that I'm harping on about fishnets, but it looked like she was back in the fishnets. And I picked up this book, and she's back in a normal Justice League dark thing. I'm like, what? Um, yeah. I don't think, I don't think Justice League Dark fits the backstory type of idea, primarily because I think Ram V writes in such a um, heavy way that there's always a lot of setup, there's always a lot of middle, and then the conclusion's always great. So I don't think getting like six or seven pages a month or a week or whatever is going to cut it for that level of person. 
Yeah. I think I would rather, I don't know what you think, but I would rather have something like a 64, 80 page special Justice League Dark comes out every quarterly. You pay $7.99 for it as part of the black label. That's what I would, if you want to have a book called Justice League Dark, that's where it should be. Yeah. You shouldn't definitely. try and shoehorn superheroes into it. But that's just me. Yeah. Your thoughts? Um, I liked the use of color. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've changed. Your clothes are nice. Right, yeah. 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 Well Cause like when, when he, he summons the runes and stuff, I was like, okay, it's nice. You know, it's nice contrast. I even like the little, the flashy, the like, I don't even want to call it a flashback because they jump into it. Like on page 21 where it's all gray, what? like, Gray and blue. Let's go back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah like Not that. that one. The next one. Sorry, next one. Yeah, that one. Well, they look all spirity and stuff. I'm like, I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then yeah, I agree with Zatanna's outfit. I don't know why they <laughs> put her in these. My main issue is is that it's clunky. Yeah. Uh, it's a clunky outfit, and it just. If you're a superhero, you don't want to wear a clunky outfit because it gets in the way. Have you tried to run in a freaking trench coat, like like a heavy duty trench coat? It freaking sucks, man. Like those things are heavy. <laughs> <laughs> like she needs to be weaving spells and throwing her arms around and stuff. I'm like, yeah, that's not gonna happen. She's gonna get all tangled up in her coat. So uh, that's my main issue with Zatanna's current outfit, and you know, it, it's. It, <sighs> In the fishnet hand things, I had those when I was in high school. They kind of suck because they rip and crap. It's just, it, it feels like whoever designed the outfit is like my age or a little bit older because they're doing things that were like cool when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not okay. cool anymore. <laughs> I mean, you're absolutely right. I, I mean, I know she's been wearing this outfit for a while now. This is this is her new Justice League dark outfit, but I don't know, man. Don't advertise one thing, then give us something else, you know? Yeah. Um, it'd be interesting to see how this book plays out, because I don't I don't see the kind of correlation yet between Justice mm. League and Justice League dark. Give, you know, when you think of how many other characters are in the Justice League, you could have had, like, a Canary Green Arrow backup instead, you know, or uh, Shazadam thing, just to kind of bring you up to speed, rather than than this and and you know just as i say just as league dark should be a black label book stick it over Definitely. there yeah. so let's have some stuff because i know ram v can write for black for black label i know he's got the the cojones for that because of his um independent stuff with vault so there you go mm -hmm. cool so a bit of a mixed bag i think just as league on one hand it's it's really bright and really airy on the others it's kind of like mm, it's mm. just not not quite enough yet. You know, if it takes you three issues to get past the start point, you know, we're kind of... Yeah, fix the piecing. Yeah, <laughs> fix the piecing. All right. Three books down. Big news this week, of course, was the release on HBO Max and Sky Cinema for everyone in the UK of the Zack Snyder Justice League cut. Bum, bum, bum. Yep. This is four hours of your life that you are never going to get back. <laughs> nope. Nope. Get the popcorn and drink maybe some nachos. <laughs> drink the nachos. That's what you need to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dip the popcorn in the beer and drink the nachos. All um, right. Okay. So, um, so over here in the UK, this is on Sky Cinema, so I got to read, uh, watch it um, Thursday, Thursday, I think it was, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's four hours of my life that it's like, okay, well, I watched it. <laughs> Freya, what did you think? Okay, well, <clears throat> overall, um, it was be um, it was a lot better than the the Whedon or the theatrical version that we got. Uh -huh. um, they got rid of a lot of those stupid jokes that didn't really make sense and were just out of place, like Aquaman sitting on the lasso truth and, mm -hmm. you know, the, that really annoying, what was it, the one where Flash trips over himself and lands on top of Wonder Woman, which was also completely out of place and inappropriate. And also they got rid of the scene that, where Batman is like, 
freaking can't get his emotions in place and he has that off collar co or not off collar just that comments about um wonder woman and um freaking i'm losing i forgot his name steve steve where he makes a comment about steve and she walks out. i'm like really but this isn't batman why is batman's being such a bitch <laughs> <laughs> why is ba batman why are you such a bitch <laughs> yeah, so it got rid of that like all of those unnecessary scenes and it also got rid of that stupid subplot with like the russian or the russian family they're trapped <laughs> in their house and i was like because when i first watched that movie i was like why do we keep cutting back to this random family and then superman and then it just turns out it was a lead up to a joke of superman being like Oh, I gotta save civilians. And Batman's like, well, we need to save the world first. Now, but let, let me save the civilians first, Bruce. I'm like, you yeah. know, the boxes destroy the world, right? Super just yeah. So he got he got rid of all those stupid jokes. I was like, Ugh. but um, and then also I now completely understand why um Cyborg, the the actor who played Cyborg was so pissed off mm -hmm. <laughs> because all of his things were cut. I would have been too. You know what? There is a shed load of cyborg. Well, I say cyborg. Is it cyborg? No. Uh, or is it Blue Beetle? You tell me. Because it mm. certainly acts like Blue Beetle. I mean, where do those <laughs> extra arms come from? Yeah, I know. I was like, oh, the little arms. Okay, I gave the little arms a pass. <laughs> but now that we're talking about Blue Beetle, like, I was thinking that um, the, the monsters. They look so much like Blue Beetle that I just <laughs> I was like, hey, it's Blue Beetle. <laughs> Thousands of Blue Beetles everywhere. Because they wow. do. They look exactly like Blue Beetle. It's just that their color scheme is different. Um, also, I did I did appreciate that they thought that they um, fixed the color scheme. Yeah. Because in the theatrical cut, it was so it was so cartoony in the colors. Mm -hmm. And it was overly saturated. I remember watching it. I'm like, this kind of bothers my eyes a bit. Mm -hmm. um, but Snyder Cut, it's darker. The very Snyder way. Um, also, the, the, my main gripe is like, he likes slow-mo too much. And so oh, I, I was, whenever okay. the slow-mo would come on, I just roll my eyes and like, just. Uh... Fast forward <laughs> by 1.5. Is that what you did? <laughs> I was like, this is why the movie's four hours long because of all the freaking slow mo. I'm like, just get rid of the slow mo, dude. And then it'd probably be like three hours, and I wouldn't be here for an extra hour. Kind of like 300. That movie's like 30 minutes long if you get rid of all the slow mo and make it normal speed. So here's here's the thing with me for the slow mo. I get that it's a good little kind of tool at times. And it, I get that it shows how great the CGI artists are because, let's be honest, it is CGI. Yeah. Um, but it's turned into the nine-panel page of movies. Mm -hmm. You know, every time you open a, a, like a, a, a DC epic event book, it's nine panels. Yeah. Every time you watch a Zack Snyder movie, it's slow more. It's mm -hmm. like it works in places. I'm not saying it doesn't, but every single time. I mean, yeah. when you're playing football, I, mean, I know you would just fast forward through that because I know you hate football. But do I really need to see someone try and hurdle someone in slow motion? No. 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 It okay. works when Flash is. It, where it works is when Flash is running, and everyone else is in slow mo, and yep. he's moving normal speed. That's when it works, and that's. I feel that's the only time it should have been in this movie is when Flash was moving. Mm -hmm. But it was for freaking everything. <laughs> yeah. you know? Got to hurdle this dude. And Wonder Woman chucks the suitcase into the air. And so then we get this awkward where she's like in the air. And then it's slow-mo. And then we watch it slowly. And then it explodes. And then she gets shot. And, was, and something else that bothered me. Um, was it the Amazon singing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> random Amazonian because I'm like cool the Amazonian stuff is awesome and you know yeah. the whole Themyscira fight battle was amazing and they Agreed. did better with that with like the temple falling into the mm -hmm. sea and you know all of that but like that that's like one of my favorite scenes was the, the, the Amazonians but like 
Yeah, the because it's it's cool when Wonder Woman shows up and then they have that like you know her little Amazonian theme song, but it mm -hmm. happens in the most random times, like during the final battle. That she's obviously there and she's been fighting Steppenwolf the whole time, but then she like jumps over him and then all of a sudden we have the little Amazonian ah, thing <laughs> going on. I'm like I didn't know she was singing then. I'm yeah, like, because the the battle music all of a sudden stops and we get the Amazonian singing thing, and I'm like. What just happened? <laughs> so yeah. I was like, this, whoever did the sound, I don't know if it was Zack Snyder be like, no, you can't it, it, insert this here. And I'm like, it just, <laughs> so out of place. And that's not even the only time it happened. I'm like, mm. what is this? I guess he really likes the Amazonian like singing intro. Um, um, okay, it, cool. So um, other questions to ask. Mm -hmm. Was Batman in this movie? No. No. Uh, no, one of the good things I liked about the Snyder, <laughs> the uh, Whedon cut was the um, the Batman in the the criminal fight yeah. at the start of the movie when he uses him to lure out a power demon. Mm -hmm. See, I didn't like that scene, but I did like how Batman was more intelligent because mm. he kind of became like the butt of Joe. Like, he, he's like, I'm rich. I'm like, no. Batman is the world's greatest detective. He's the strategist. Mm -hmm. He's supposed to be the one coming up with the battle plans and everything. But in the Snyder Cut, he took a back seat to Alfred, which is really freaking weird if you think mm -hmm. about it. Because I'm like, Alfred, <clears throat> we love Alfred. But we love Alfred not because he's, you know, the super intelligent guy who creates everything for Batman. Bruce Wayne is the one who creates everything for himself. Mm -hmm. You know, we, I like Alfred because he's the the, the parental father figure to um batman and all of the robins you know mm -hmm. and we love him for the parental thing we don't <laughs> so but they kind of made him become batman and batman just was kind of the side character and it was really annoying <laughs> like, as a sidekick there you go yeah it was really irritating and i'm like can, can someone please just like make batman the world's greatest detective for once please i mean that is his thing. He's the world's greatest detective, and he is, he is rich, and he has all these gadgets and stuff, but he's supposed to be super intelligent, too, you know? And so that really bothered me. Okay. Um, so. <laughs> all right, let me ask you another question, then. Yeah. Um, so, we've, you know, we talk about Blue Beetle. I mean, Cyborg. I mean, yeah, he gets a, <laughs> he gets a, a fair sh shake of the tail. The Flash gets mm -hmm. a, fair, a fair amount of um action as mm -hmm. well um let me ask you mm -hmm. what was the point of this dude oh martian manhunter <sighs> so <laughs> what i mean he rocks up to talk to lois and then uh -huh. he walks up to talk to Bruce and says, I hate the fight. But, dude, the fight's over. Yeah. He didn't show up. Yeah, I was like, thanks, Marsh Manhunter. Thanks. I thought he would, like, be somewhere, you know, but yeah. he didn't. So I was like, okay. So my whole thing is he was just there to possibly have a Martian Manhunter movie, which I would love. But considering the studio doesn't seem to like Zack Snyder all that much. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't think we'll get it. So it's just kind of like a oh, what could have been, and it's just you know, it, it, it's it's you know bittersweet, I guess. I'm like, because I was excited, I'm like, yeah, Martian Manhunter. I'm like, oh wait, we're never gonna get a Martian Manhunter movie, which is yeah, freaking... Martian Manhunter doesn't do a thing. Yeah, doesn't so it was lost potential, is what that was, and it upset me. It's it's like. Yeah, it, it it was the same thing with Dark Side. Okay. And Apocalypse, everyone. Mm -hmm. Well, the Snyderverse, unless WB or because eighteen like eighteen T bought WB, unless they yep. decide to continue on with the Snyderverse DC universe, we're not going to get an Apocalypse. Well, aren't they doing a New Gods movie? Isn't that so? Maybe Who? we'll get an Apocalypse if they're doing actually doing a New Gods movie. But like it's just wasted potential because he's like, we're gonna go and invade, and I'm like, well, we're not because 
there's rumors of them rebooting the DCU already. Yep. Um, so I was, I mean, I was super excited to see Apocalypse and, you know, yeah. Dark Side and everything, but like, it, it's, it's wasted potential because this DCU is going to get rebooted most likely. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so yeah. it's the same thing with Martian Manhunter. It's just what could have been. And it's, so that's why it's bittersweet because it was awesome in the movie, but then you're like, you're not going to get this, you know, which is sad. Because <laughs> 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 I would love to see Dark Side. I want to see a New Gods movie with like Dark Side and Apocalypse and all that crap because it would be interesting. And I suppose it depends on how well Eternals do from mm -hmm. uh, Migrate. I mean, Marvel. You know, because mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta think that that's I think that's probably the biggest risk Marvel have taken movie wise since Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Yeah, this uh you know, everyone else is pretty much brand name recognition. Captain America, Thor, Iron Man, every that's all like big brands. Talk Guardians of the Galaxy, and you have no idea who's that is it, you know, is it gonna be Star Lord? Is the ship gonna talk? <laughs> yeah. You know, is it gonna have like a, the energy shield? <laughs> Is it going to be Vance? Is it going to be, you know, all these different things kicking off about which version of Guardians it's going to be. Eternals is the same thing. I hope Eternals does really, really well. And I hope it does allow for uh, a greater storytelling um, opus rather than just, hey, look, big giant alien superheroes, which based on Marvel's... Um, Plan to date is pretty much what I think we're going to get. I'd like to see something a little bit cleverer, um, which I think fits Apocalypse and the New Gods much, much better. But yeah, hey, I, what can I say? I'm, we're obviously biased over here on, on TDC, so that's cool. I'm yeah. all right with that. Um, yeah, but I agree I, with you. Yeah, I, it's just a yeah, waste of potential. Um, did you notice the chick sniffing Hawkman's clothes? Uh, <laughs> I didn't. Right. I didn't notice this, but my wife, Mrs. H, because uh, we're working from home, so she didn't watch the, the, the cut with me. She was watching it um, after the event, after I watched it. And she was like, why is that person sniffing her, his clothes? I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. She goes, oh, he's, I mean, I, she, and then, of course, she went and spoke. I said, well, I mean, I would, of course. But I'm like, all right, easy. But, um, no, I, did, I had you know, no idea. Didn't spot it. <laughs> did, you know it's the pre did you know it's the pregnancy kit? I did. Which also, I was like, because people confuse me because they're like, oh, this movie takes place three years after Bat or Superman dies. I'm like, who knocked Lois up then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think... If I know pregnancies, <laughs> as a female, I'm pretty sure I do. They're not three <laughs> years long. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, the, um, I'm like, uh, I think okay. I think the timeline is a bit wonky at the start <laughs> of the movie. It's it's you know, but I don't think it's three years because you've still got like the flag hanging up on the on the tower bridge of Superman and stuff. So yeah. Uh, so, other okay. questions I have mm -hmm. things like why the black Superman suit? What what's the point? It I looks mean, cool. I know, but the red and blues look cool. I think it was more to so that he uh, blended in with the group better instead of like sticking out like a sore thumb because everyone else kind of had like the darker colors going on because Zack oh, Snyder he's wearing gold and green for Christ's sakes I know like... but with the Zack Snyder coloration of everything he kind of looks more like he's wearing like brown and dark green like mm. it, it, it's everything's more muted even freaking Flash's outfit looks darker um mm. And so that's why I think he went with that. Honestly, all I think is was he went with, ah, uh, it looks cool. <laughs> I mean, historically, in the comic books, in in the comic books, the black Kryptonian suit has been used as a means to recharge Superman um, when he came back from the dead. Back in the comic books, um, that was the suit he would do. It was absorb solar energy quicker, which would allow him to be super. Which is fine. If that was the reason, I'd totally buy into that. However, after the event, and he's walking down the street, and he pulls, he does the whole shirt pull thing. Mm -hmm. It's still the black suit. At that stage, you would have thought he would have been back in his red and blues. 
Maybe he's in his emo phase like Spider Man and Spider Man 3. Uh, good God, you've got to start dancing. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> my dancing's is worse than my singing, it seems. All right, okay. Um, so, would you watch it again? Um, maybe, but not in one sitting. I would definitely because they had it's like part one, part two, whatever. Mm. I'd probably get through. Um, I'd probably watch about half of it and then stop and then go live my life and then the next day finish it up. But definitely not in one sitting. That was just too much, and my head hurt. <laughs> Do you think that? A couple of questions then on that, just just kind of to gauge your opinion. Do you think that the original plan to break it into episodes, do you think that spoiled the pacing of the movie because you had to have that cliffhanger moment at the end before the next part? Uh, or do you think it, it, it would it have suited being episodic? I think it would have suited being episodic, um, but if it was episodic then it should have been longer and they should have had like kind of each episode do a background for each character, like new character, mm. like uh, cyborg should have had more of like his own whole thing. Instead of having cyborgs parts all chopped up and kind of mm -hmm. in between everyone else's stuff, it should have been all combined and mm -hmm. like in one part and it should have ended with like wonder woman coming up and asking him, you know, do you yeah. want to join? And then him taking off. And then mm -hmm. the same thing with flash, it should have been like all of his stuff. But let me say, I hate it. I still hate flash in this movie <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> completely. Mm -hmm. Like this is the worst Barry Allen I have seen. And it bugs me. Um, so, but I did like his flashpoint moment at the end, like going through time and all that. That was pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah. I think if they did it that way, it would do the episode episodic better, but because it is kind of like chopped up and everyone's like background stories are kind of intermingled with each other mm -hmm. with how it's edited. Not so much. Um, mm. but also what'd you think of, um, uh, freaking, uh, Stefan Wolf's redesign. I wasn't when I first. I, I didn't mind it. I, my first thought is I don't mind it at all. It, mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it's fine. I mean, it has no no bearing on the movie one way or the other how he looks. But what it did bring to my attention was that the Snyder cut or the Snyder reimage, whatever you want to do, because this is the film that has added bits onto it. It's not the original mm -hmm. cut. It's the original cut plus. Um, it just made me realize um, how much CGI had been added into the movie. And that sounds like a really ridiculous thing to say because there's a lot of CGI to start with. But having the character totally redesigned kind of spoiled the um, – kind of spoiled the – the moment it kind of took me out of the movie for a bit you know mm. and i ended up i started thinking about the the um the cgi element rather than the storytelling um because story-wise it might seem a bit tighter because of all the different origins but it means it's also very very bloated especially that first hour um yeah. i kind of think well i would have liked to have seen a, the more streamlined version of, of story rather than the, the bloatedness and the, the the way he just sort of like uh for snyder focused on his own needs rather than the viewers needs um so basically all the all this cut does is give you this element of weight oh and by the way it changes all the cgi um yeah it was all right it was, you know i wasn't i wasn't too to be fair i wasn't too pissed off at the first step of wolf Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah, it, did, it didn't bother me so much. How about you? Did you like it? Um, I did. I liked how his suit was constantly moving, and I liked the um, it, it the metallic -y, like color mm -hmm. change, where sometimes it looked purpley, and everything. I also really liked it his redesign because they flattened his nose and gave him like yeah. seven fingers and all that. I kind of liked it because he actually looked more like a wolf with okay. like the. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, he looked more animalistic, like a like yeah. a wolf and stuff. So that's why I liked it. Um, okay. However, I, like I do remember, yeah, <laughs> the like sad was really cool. Yeah, the sad I did like cool. the sad. And then, did you notice that? Um, what was it, Grandma? Gra 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 Granny goodness. 
Granny Goodness is there, but yep, she has yes. the short hair. Yeah, yep. I was like, oh, that you know, I know who these characters are, and I'm excited, but you know, but um, with the the CG element, <clears throat> they actually, um, it wasn't Stephen Wolf that took me out with the CG. It was actually the scene, Wonder Woman's en intro scene, where she's like, uh, saving all the people lined up, and she's uh -huh. ricocheting the bullets. That CG is the one that went, uh, you know, because it <laughs> looked. I don't want to say look bad because I know it takes a lot of okay, it takes a lot of effort and people who do it, you know, they're very talented and all that jazz. But oh my gosh, she looked really fake. It was almost as bad as, if not as bad as the original cuts, Henry Cavill, kid cell phone face. <laughs> I just gotta leave say that. It did. Her arms looked just fake. It looked really bad. Yeah, yeah. In my opinion, and once again, not saying that the artists are not creative and blah blah, and they're not because they are, but it's still, it still looked fake. And the thing with CG, and I don't like CG too much. I like practical yeah, effects. Famous. So practical effects are the way to go. Um, and because if you look at like things like The Hobbit, and then mm -hmm. you look at Lord of the Rings, which one has aged better? The one that uses practical effects or the one who relied on CG? I mean, was. I'm with you on this. I still think Star Wars A New Hope, mm -hmm. back when I saw it was just called Star Wars, when the, the Rebel blockade runner goes over Tatooine it's chased down by the Star Destroyer, still mm -hmm. one of the best openings of a movie ever. And it's models. Yeah. yeah no CGI. Mm -hmm. And then you see stuff like um, Revenge of the Sith where they're doing all the dogfighting straight away. It's like, man, it just looks terrible. I'll tell you yeah. what I did notice about some of the CGI. Uh, later on in the movie, um, characters weren't well rounded, so mm -hmm. you'd find when they turned, the backs would be like straight. There would be no sort of definition. Heads would be kind of like, like cut in half. They, they weren't mm -hmm. fully formed somehow. They looked odd, um, mm -hmm. which again pulled me out of the movie a little bit. Um, I suppose for our final talk, final chat about this before mm -hmm. we take a break for next. For next time, the original, the, the original, the, the Whedon cut stops with Deathstroke on the the yacht. This has a couple of extra end scenes. Of course, it's got the Martian bit, which we've talked about. But then, of course, you've got the, the desolate future. What did you think of that kind of interaction with the characters there? So the desolate future thing, um, it. Honestly, I don't. I don't think it should have been an ending thing. It, mm -hmm. it should have because it kind of played right into the Martian Manhunter thing. Because Bruce wakes up and the Martian Manhunter, you know, uh -huh. talks to him. I think that should have been the beginning of the movie. Martian Manhunter should have, you know, actually shown up in the Justice League, mm -hmm. and because it should have taken the place of, you know, where Batman was using the um, the 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 villain to um get the monsters because that would explain why he knew about the monsters and everything with Martian mm -hmm. Manhunter coming and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. that would have made more sense at the beginning and not an after credit scene. Mm -hmm. um, also the freaking, I know everyone's like, this is the best, you know, Joker, Batman, blah, 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 I'm ever. Like, no, it's not. It's not the best in interaction between Joker and Batman. What are you guys, 12? This is the only Batman movie? Like, is the Snyder <laughs> movie the only Batman movies you've seen? Is this the only Joker you've seen? This is not the best to Batman Joker interaction on screen. I'm no. sorry. It's not. Which is it's your favorite one then? Which was your favorite? Which is your favorite Batman Joker interaction then? There if go. we're going with like big screen Joker Batman mm -hmm. interactions, um, I would go with Heath Ledger's uh, Joker and mm -hmm. um, the interrogation room scene. I really oh, like it because I do. I like when he like smashes his face into the. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I do Never like start that. with the head. <laughs> Gotta start, yeah, and I was like, I like that scene, but I also really like Heath Ledger's Joker. Like he uh -huh. was really good, and I hate Jared Leto's Joker. His laugh, I was like, he sounds like a raspy old like cracks or chains chain smoker grandma laugh, you know, or it's like <laughs> it's like gasping mm. for air. I hate his laugh. And he was doing that stupid laugh through the entire thing. I'm like, it's not it's not a good joker laugh. Mm. I don't like this joker. 
why the crap is he dragging Joker around with him anyway? And mm. I'm like, if we're doing the whole injustice thing and Joker killed Lois Lane, then Joker would have been the first person that freaking Superman sought out and murdered because that's what he did in injustice. He freaking took his hand through his chest. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so I was like, it doesn't. Also, I was getting, um, I even put this on a post on Twitter. Um, I was just getting when uh, Joker's like, oh, you need me. We need each other. I'm like, what is this Lego Batman? Because that's mm -hmm. the whole premise of Lego Batman is Joker's like, you need me, Batman. Batman's like, I don't need you. I don't need anyone. And then Joker mm -hmm. proceeds to cry. And I was like, I was getting those vibes. <laughs> yeah. So it's, um, I'm not, I'm not, I was under the impression. I've got the thought that it was dark side that had killed Lois, not, not the Joker. I don't know what the Joker's around there for other than just to, you know, kind of, you know, sell tickets, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, if dark side killed, Lois, why would Superman work for Darkseid? Because Darkseid has done something to him. Hmm. Without okay. without without Lois, there's no there's no there's no point. There's a, at least that's that's the idea. That's the the idea I've got. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd probably have to watch it again in about a month's time just to kind of get there. But um, yeah, I was kind of. A bit nonplussed about it to be fair i think i suppose mm -hmm. the end bit the best thing i liked about it was the fact it showed um all the flash so it mm -hmm. ties into batman versus superman where flash goes back in time and tells him bruce bruce lois is the key lois is the key um yeah. um but other than that no again it's joker i'm sick of seeing joker um, yeah for me i think big screen I think Heath Ledger in, in Christian Bale is probably, probably the best interaction. Mm -hmm. I think for me, it's probably at the end where they're in the building. Oh, and yeah. Like, yeah. You know, do you think do you think that I was going to beat you in a fight? No, I'm fighting for something greater than that. I'm fighting for the soul of the city. And Batman's all like, you know, he's got faith because they, they, they're not going to blow each other up and stuff. I think that, that sort of like intimate dialogue is that is what i really like and then obviously when he drops off the um building and bats catches him he says you just you just couldn't do it you just couldn't let me die you know <laughs> we're gonna do this forever and you're like uh yep <laughs> okay um so for me that, that that's kind of like i mean the interrogation scene i absolutely agree with you it's an absolute key part of that movie um you know because people don't realize that you know the He's, he's telling the joke right there. He's telling people the wrong address to get them to, you know, to, to make their own choices and stuff. Um, yeah, a bit pointless, I thought. Um, I was, I would have been quite happy. I would have been quite happy to end on the on the barge with with Deathstroke. I, I would have been okay with that. Um, I didn't see the point of the Martian, the extra Martian bit because he's done nothing in the movie. Um, I don't know. It's just. It's again that overindulgence element, I think, that kind of just just because you can do something doesn't mean you should always do it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's a motto for life. Yep. Just because you can buy a Marvel comic doesn't mean you have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> All right. So finally, so out of three, out of five, give us a give us a score for for the old uh, Snyder Cup movie. Then out of five. Out of five, how many stars would you give it? I will give it a, a 3.5, if not four out of five, because like you said, it's slow at the beginning, and I hate the, the, and the slow-mo and girl sniffing coat. And <laughs> just, hey, each to their own. Each to their own. I know, but like, come on. Come might on. Be some, might be something fishy about that scene. <laughs> Um, I'm <laughs> I'm going to be a little bit harsher. I'm going three, three stars mm. for me. It was, you know, I yeah. The first the the Whedon cut has its issues. It does, but I don't know. I, mm. It it it's all right. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. So, but hey ho. All right, there you go. That's it for this week. Um, thank you, Freya, for joining us. No, no problem. Just <laughs> us league. Um, don't forget to check the UCPN for all of your favorite um, shows. Freya, 
um, K-pop Cosmos and this upcoming week, um, I kind of bended my own rules. So oh, you've gone <laughs> through the speed. You've traveled the speed of light. Oh, I, no. I broke some rules. Yeah. Damn it, Freya. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then. Which rule did you break? Um, this group is more of a rock group than pop, <sighs> but they still technically have the K-pop logo attached to them. So, <laughs> so it's K-rock. Yep. All right. Okay. Excellent. Interesting sound. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. Um, and of course, don't forget flip side, which is coming to you live on Thursday, uh, 2 p.m. EST. Um, check out YouTube and all your local places where shows air. Um, Freya, thanks very much. No, no problem. Maybe we'll be back to full speed next time. Who knows? Mm -hmm. All right, guys. This is Johnny Machine Hughes saying adios. <laughs>